y'all, Melissa here with you today, and I am wearing today's project. Last video, I showed you how to make a basic cardigan. Today, I'm going to show you how to modify the pattern to cut it out of a throw blanket and make use of things like the rib knit that already exists on the throw blanket to be part of your cardigan. So meet me back at the cutting table and I'll show you how I cut this out. Today, I am using a knit throw blanket for my fabric. If you buy the 60 inch by 80 inch size of throw blanket, that's a little over two yards of fabric. And this one is 100% cotton and has a fun texture. One of the reasons I like using a blanket instead of sweater knit fabric is because the edges are generally finished with ribbing. And there are two different kinds, and you can tell if you look closely at the stitching. So the true ribbing here is on the top and the bottom of the blanket, and you can see these columns of little round stitches, and those are rays. And then on the sides, this is rows of those stitching, and it's actually the purl side of the rib where you can see the yarn carries. That part is raised, and it'll be the reverse on the opposite side. So there is the rows of the knit stitch and the rows of raised purl stitch. And the only reason I like to differentiate is because I prefer the rib knit that is on the top and the bottom for the cuffs and the hem band, where I can use the side faux rib knit here as the button placket. And I'm gonna talk today about how I'm cutting this pattern out because I want to make sure to make use of that rib knit that is on here. So I've actually gone ahead and I have drawn out my seam allowances on some pieces and I'm gonna eliminate the underarm seam here, and I'm gonna combine some other seaming. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold my fabric, and I'm paying attention to keeping the rib knit pieces here aligned at the bottom. So I've gone ahead and I have taken my um, hem band piece, and instead of having it fully out, I've gone ahead and I've folded it this way, and I've marked off the seam allowance from where that would normally be sewn to the top half of the project. And then I'm gonna place my back here, I'm gonna place the hem band aligned on the rib knit, and I'm gonna take my seam lines that I've marked and overlap them. And then I'm going to eliminate that seam under the arm. I've marked that seam allowance on both sides here, and I'm going to go ahead and line that up as well. And then all I have to do is cut out the top pieces. So I've eliminated the seam that attaches the head hem band to the top, and I've eliminated this underarm seam here. And you can see that my hem band is actually a little shorter than the front and back pieces combined. That's by design, but since I am using the knitted on rib knit trim that is on this piece, I'm going to go ahead and just cut it even with the front of the sweater. So as you can see, when I open this up, I don't need to sew those side seams. All I'm going to need to sew is the shoulder seams. So let me place that right sides together, and then I'm gonna set this aside. To cut out the sleeves, I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did to connect the hem band and the top and eliminate that seam. I've gone ahead and taken my cuff piece and I folded it in half and marked off the seam allowance and I'm going to place that on the rib knit and then overlap the seam allowance of my sleeve. And when I get to this area, you can see there is a difference. And I do like my cuffs to be a little tighter than I worry about hem, hem bands being. So I'm going to kind of like fold my sleeve in so that by the time it gets down to the cuff here, it is that width. And 
And then I'm going to use this sleeve piece to cut out the second sleeve piece after I fold my fabric again. Notice that I am avoiding cutting through this rib knit that is down on the sides of the throw. That's because I'm going to be using it later. So I'm gonna take my two sleeves, fold these right sides together, and set them aside as well. The final piece I need to cut is my button placket. So I've gone ahead and I folded that in half as well. I am going to include the seam allowance. It's just that I'm not gonna be doubling up because I want to use this long edge that I've been saving to make that button and neck placket. So I'm going to start with the sleeve pieces and I'm going to go ahead and sew the arm seam. So here are my sleeves and I want to go ahead and turn these right side out. And then with this part of the sweater, wrong side out, I'm going to take a sleeve, I am going to mark the center with a clip. So here's my seam and here's the top center of the shoulder. And I'm going to match that inside here. So that matches with the shoulder seam on that I just sewed. Then I will match the bottom edge here. And since I eliminated that seam, normally you would match seams here, I'm gonna put a clip so that I know what I'm matching. So it's the seam from the sleeve matching with the not seam, but center part of that underarm. And then once I have those two clips in place at the top and the bottom of the sleeve, then I can worry about pinning in between to match the rest of the armhole to the rest of the sleeve. And then I'm going to take this to the serger and I'm going to stitch around that armhole to secure the sleeve to the rest of the cardigan. I'm going to repeat that on the other side as well. Okay, now that I have my button placket sewed on, the next thing I'm going to do is take care of these bottom edges and finishing them. So I'm going to just fold this up and I wanna sew a zigzag stitch right over that raw edge. And I am going to back stitch before cutting my thread. Okay, here is the best way I found to make the buttonholes on sweater knits, and this is going to be doing it by hand. So here I have the buttonhole I wanna make marked. On the back side, I have put some fusible non-stretch interfacing and I'm going to go ahead and hand sew this buttonhole here. I'm going to start by cutting just a couple of the knit stitches in the middle of this marking. So I only want to cut like through two stitches. And you can see I've made kind of a hole there and I'll poke through my interfacing as well. All right, there we go. The reason I start much smaller than I'm gonna end up is because this sweater knit is super stretchy. I'm kind of pulling my interfacing and you can see how even just cutting two stitches, that hole gets really big pretty fast. So it's always better to start smaller and then check with your button and make sure that it will work. Next what I'm gonna do is I am using embroidery thread here. This is six strand embroidery thread. I've double threaded with three strands. So I've got six working strands on my needle. I'm going to come up at the end of where I want my buttonhole to be. And I'm just going to go up and back down on the end of the buttonhole. Then I want to come up and I'm using these stitches as a guide, so I'm going one knit stitch below, and then I'm going to hold my thread up at the top here, and I'm going to put my needle like this. And so I'm making like a loop around the needle, and then pulling down through it. And what that does is it makes a little knot up here at the top of the stitch. 
I go into the next knit stitch here and I will keep repeating this around the edge of my stitching, around the edge of my hole, I mean. And you see how there are these little knots getting formed in a chain around the buttonhole. Okay, once I have gone with that knotted chain once around the buttonhole, then I kind of pull the interfacing, I stretch the buttonhole, make sure that my button is going to fit through here, and then to give it a nice finish, I go and whip stitch one more time back around. So you can see how that's building up these nice row of stitches that just look a little bit more finished. And once you've gone around the buttonhole, go ahead and take your thread to the back side. And we're going to knot it back here. And I cut the thread off. And I also at this point kind of peel off and cut off the remaining interfacing that's not directly underneath the stitching. So there is my buttonhole. There's the sample one. This is washable marker that I use to mark it so that'll wash off. And here is what it looks like on my actual sweater. So it's completely hidden behind the large button and it's not so loose that the button easily comes undone. Okay y'all, here is my finished sweater. I've gone ahead and sewed the buttons on and I've done the buttonholes. Check out this playlist for more ideas of clothing to sew.